Hello and welcome back to part three of this first person game setup. Last video we created the character blueprint and we set up the camera input into the game so that way if I hit play I can use my mouse and look around and my character also spawns into this player start. So there's my player start and we can see the player and look around with the camera. So in our character blueprint we're going to come down here where we added our IA move action input and we're going to add our movement setup now. Okay, so this is going to be separated into two parts. We're going to do the left right movement and then we're going to tackle the uh, forward backward movement. So if I right click from triggered on the IA move and I'm going to do add movement input. Add movement input. I'm going to right click on the action value of the IA movement and I'm going to choose split struct. X value is going to be the horizontal movement, left right. Y value is going to be the forward backward movement. Okay, so in a blank area, I'm going to right click and I'm going to do get control rotation. From the get control rotation, I'm going to right click and choose split struct pin on this return value. That's going to give me an X, a Y, and a Z input. And in a blank area to the right of that, I'm going to do or find get right vector. Okay, so I need to know the right direction from the player. If I go back to viewport, here's the arrow. I need to know this direction over here, the right direction of that forward arrow that the character has. And I'm going to right click on the end rot, which is end rotation, and choose split struct pin. And from the get control rotation, I'm going to connect up return value x into end rot x, and return value z into end rot z. Okay, that gives me a vector return value that I can then connect to the world direction of the add movement input and the action value X of the IA move is going to go into the scale value of that add movement. Okay. So if I compile it and save, we can go test this out. If I hit play, now I should be able to use A and D to move the character left and right. W and S don't do anything yet, but D will move the character to the right, A will move the character to the left. Okay. If you do have that inverted, then your return values are not set right to the end rotation values of the right vector. So the last part here is we're going to add another add movement input to the end of our first add movement input. So we'll say add movement input. So this is the execute one after another. So the IA movement input, if I'm pressing WASD, we'll see if I am pressing A and D first and then move the character left or right. And then also see if I'm pressing W and S and then eventually move the character forward and backward. So we can actually copy this get control rotation. So if I hit control C, control V, and put it down here somewhere. This time I want to get the forward vector. So get forward vector. And I'm going to right click on the end rot of that and choose split struct pin. And then one that really matters here is the Z value. Return value Z gets connected to end rot Z. Okay. And then the return value of the get forward vector goes into the world direction of add movement. And then if I go back some, the action value Y is going to go into the scale value of the second add movement input. So if I zoom out and drag from action value Y to scale value of second add movement. That'll connect that up. If I double click over here on that green wire pin, I can create a little dot or a pin over here. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here to create me two pins so that my wires aren't overlapping as much as possible. So I can kind of move this up here to condense it down a little more. Make this look a little bit smoother as much as I can here. Move this in a little bit. All right, so there is our IA move. Okay, we can go test that out, compile, save. And if I play, 
Now I should be able to have W for forward motion, S for backward motion, A for left, D for right. If I use a combination, I can move around in angles as well. All right, so I can back up. I can create a comment now. I can select all of those and hit C for comment, and I can title this in WASD movement. And we can add a color to this if we'd like to, maybe blue. Put that up there in our organized fashion that we had earlier. Okay, if you want your character to move faster or slower, then we can come to the character movement component. And we can find max walk speed. So as default, it's 600 centimeters a second. If you want that faster, if you want that slower, you can change that max walk speed. So we'll come back when we do jump in the next video. You can see that you can change the jump velocity as well. But the character movement, if you want to move faster, uh, you can change that max walk speed value. If you put that back to zero or 600, mine got accidentally changed to 601. Um, that's what the default max walk speed is. All right, make sure you compile and save. And then I'll wrap up this video how to create WASD movement with a first person character.